Hello and welcome to the program. I am DG Badimasi. Now, there's been a lot of pressure on the federal government lately to announce the names of persons funding terrorism in the country since presidential spokesperson Garba Shehu revealed earlier in the year that over 400 Bureau of the Change operators sponsoring Boko Haram insurgents have been arrested. Now, some Nigerians have said the government must reveal the identities of those arrested while ensuring that they are tried publicly. Recall that recently the United Arab Emirates also placed six Nigerians on its terror list for funding Boko Haram insurgency. But the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami has said the government cannot name and shame suspected financiers of terrorism before they are tried and convicted. However, Malami gave assurance that sponsors of terrorists that have been identified will be prosecuted. But of course, not everyone agrees with the position of the presidency. Let's now get some reaction to this. And now being joined on the program by senior advocate of Nigeria, Jibrin Okutekwa, who joins us from Abuja via Skype. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us on the program. Um, this issue has generated quite a lot of controversy. People are talking about it, and uh, it's indeed a surprise. Some people are saying, look, name and shame these individuals before you try them. And, of course, you know the government position saying it will not be proper to name and shame them, but rather try them and ensure they are brought to justice. What's your take on this? Well, uh, thank you, DG, for inviting me. Um, Nigerians, as usual, they are always um, interested in an, an unusual approach to some issues. And, and I think that um, I am on the same page with the Honorable the Attorney General that uh, the most important thing to do is to ensure that those who are sponsors of these terrorist acts should be arrested, brought before the courts, and have their days in court, and they should be tried in court. What is the purpose of naming and shaming? I, I, was, I, was, just going to, I, I was just going to ask you that. If What, what exactly what, that would achieve? What is the purpose? Assuming you name and shame, and at the end of the day, there is no concrete evidence. What do you do about that? You, you recall that um, Nigerians have been against the parading of suspects on television, yeah. what they call trial by, by, by the media. mass media. Even though it's not so, a trial by the media anyway. <laughs> well, um, the, 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 the proper thing for me is for the federal government to engage in what I call district and proper investigation. Mm. Bring these people who are responsible for the insecurity to before the court of law and let them have their days in court. You see, the most important thing is let them be arrested, let them be charged to court, let them be tried before a court of law, and then where they are, the, the, the case against them will be made public. But to say, let's name and shame, and at the end of the day, there is no proper investigation, no watertight tight um, uh, investigation, and these people are left off the hook. Who pays the damages that would have been suffered by the naming and shaming? Because you mark you, there are a lot of um, um, mistaken identity, and so I think that it is not proper to just begin to release names of persons without bringing before the, them before the court of law. You can't take the role of the court and beginning to naming and shaming that these are sponsors, when at actual fact, you may not have evidence to prove that they are sponsors of the terrorist attack. But, but what's your take on the argument that if the, because the government is saying it is not going to adopt that approach, and of course I understand your point quite correctly, but some people are arguing that because the government uh, has chosen not to do the naming and shaming, then the government has something to hide. Well, government all over the world have always had something to hide. And Nigeria government will never be an exception. <laughs> when, it, when you talk about issues of security and what is going on, uh, was it not the late uh, General Abbasha that made a, st a profound statement that when insecurity is lasting longer than, then the government must be involved. So, uh, as of today, most Nigerians believe that... Um, the government is not doing quite uh, what it's supposed to do. For instance, when you have these kidnappers, the terrorists, uh, attackers, 
uh, using um, uh, the modern gadgets, negotiating, and they are in Nigerian soil. So you, 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 nobody can be too sure that um, government government can do what is supposed to be done to satisfy the yearning and aspiration of everybody. But all that Nigerian and I want as a Nigerian is that there should be an end to this insecurity. So uh, whether you name or you shame or you arraign them in court of law and bring them before the court and convince them, mark you terrorism is a, a very serious offense in Nigeria. Yeah, and under the terrorist act, if you are found to be involved in terrorism, they, you pay the heaviest penalty for it, the heaviest sentence for it. So I think that what we Nigerians will be asking for is for government to uh, be aligned to its responsibility of providing security, peace and serenity for us to have our business and for us to go about our lawful activities and for us to sleep with our eyes closed. Mm. But until that is done, whether mm. you name and shame, and they are not being prosecuted, they are not being dealt with according to law, and they, they keep multiplying on daily basis, then you have not done what you are supposed to do. And so let, let me just quickly, let me quickly ask you this, sir. Uh, name and shame, or prosecute them and, and bring them to justice, which will be the most effective uh, deterrent? The most effective deterrent for me is to arrest, prosecute, and jail them. If they require that they should be executed, they should then be executed upon due process of law after they have been pronounced guilty by a court of law. Mark you, we are, we are, Nigeria is a signatory to other international conventions. When you are talking about this naming and shaming, yes, in those days, those are uh, things that our poor parents used to do when they go, you go to the village, you say this family is a family that belongs to people who are not uh, uh, not uh, normal people. They are thieves. Those things were there, but, but not not these days. But these days, can you can you can you fold the dry fish? We, we have left that. Otherwise, it's unheard of to say that you are you, you are engaging in kidnapping in Nigeria. We assassinate ourselves in broad daylight. Uh, um, so, for me, the most effective that I want mm. arrest, prosecute, and jail them. And, and, and I, if it requires. And I, I think I yes. get your point because the, the truth is that the, the question is do people feel any shame at all, even when they're associated with something bad these days? I mean, that shame is and gone. Then, and then to even talk about naming and shaming, what if in the process of naming and shaming, government begin to engage in political persecution. Mm. Mark you, we are in the era of politics. So for me, the refusal of government at this stage not to name and shame, but to arrest, prosecute, and jail should be welcome development rather than naming and shaming. Because in Nigeria, DG, it is difficult to satisfy Nigerians. If mm. Nigerian government begins to name and shame today, the next thing you will begin to hear is either that these certain sections of the country is mm. being named and shamed, shamed. Mm. because the government does not like that section of the community or the government is playing politics with it. Why can't we then demand that those who have been arrested, those who are in castration, should have their days in court in a public trial for us to know who and who are responsible for the funding, for the financing, and for the terrorism in Nigeria. That's what I think we should be demanding, rather than calling for this cosmetic naming and shaming that at the end of the day may produce no any significant uh, uh, results hmm. that will bring an end to the kind of uh, insecurity we have. Like you rightly pointed out, how many Nigerians today are indeed aware that there is there is anything called shame because if they know shame corruption wouldn't have been thriving mm. in our society thieves are being given all manner of awards everybody now is worshiping money so naming and shaming for me is out of the way let's go for reissue the reissue is 
prosecute, bring them before the court of law where they are guilty or otherwise will be determined by an impartial arbiter, not the government naming and shaming and taking the law into his hand. Mr. Jibrin Okutekwa, thank you very much for joining us on the program and thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you, Deji. God bless you. God bless you. All right, we'll take a short break and when we come back, we'll be discussing the zoning issue in the PDP. Stay with us. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred. The truth is universal. How in practical terms? Can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? The president must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On DG 360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts, and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians are saying in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues.